Some of you may be aware I've been a little dubious of the quality of Season 5 of Gotham so far. We are now nine episodes in, and I have kind of had the ongoing concern that this show wasn't really getting anywhere in the time that it needed to, that we weren't resolving a lot of plot arcs. I was disappointed about all the hype for Jeremiah's story, only for it to be as short as it was. I've been getting a bit jaded by the fact that we've gone back to a Villain of the Week format when we really needed to progress along a longer story. I've been getting tired of episodes being constantly taken up by nothing but rousing speeches about how we all need to pull together by Jim Gordon. They've been getting pretty repetitive. And this is the ninth episode now. There's, I think, three episodes left. And uh, yeah, I've been pretty concerned about it. And there was a lot on paper about this episode that didn't really excite me. So we followed up Ace Chemicals, which was, in my opinion, the best episode of the season so far, with nothing shocking, which legitimately was nothing shocking, but it was a fun little time waster, I guess. Then we move on to the trial of Jim Gordon. And I've been hearing a lot of people say it's filler, maybe it's the final of the filler episodes and stuff. And there's a lot on paper that really shouldn't work about this, for me anyway, just my personal opinion. Um, for example, I know that Poison Ivy is the main antagonist of this story. And I have an issue with Poison Ivy because her story has been something of a weak link over the course from season one all the way through to season five. It's felt like they haven't really known what to do with her and her character has kind of flip-flopped from literally being played by three very, very, very different actresses in the space of a five season run. It was, it was absurd. So, being as this episode centred very much on Jim Gordon, who's done very little other than just make rousing speeches of heroism this season, and the fact that Poison Ivy was our main antagonist, there was a lot working against this episode for me. So what did I think of it in the end now that I've watched it? Well, my hat is off to Ben McKenzie and Erin Richards, who wrote and directed this episode. Ben McKenzie wrote it, Erin Richards directed it, because they have delivered a powerhouse of a Gotham episode, honestly. Really, that was a really, really good episode. That's, that's the best episode of this season so far, in my opinion. Yes, even better than Ace Chemicals. That was fantastic. Okay, so the plot is basically about Poison Ivy trying to get Jim Gordon out of Gotham's way so that the plants can reclaim the land sort of thing, you know, so that it won't rejoin the rest of the mainland and so that the plants can rise and Gotham will just kind of regrow itself as a plant land and all humans will just kill each other basically because Jim Gordon's seen as the one guy that's kind of maintaining a sense of order here. And we see her use her sort of... Um, seductive sort of powers, sort of um, the aroma stuff, on a number of major characters from Gotham's history and everything, and um, basically she gets them to do her bidding, which results in some really enjoyable sequences. And at the same time, Jim Gordon kind of has like an internal crisis as to whether or not Gotham is better off without him. So with that, we also get some fantastic scenes. And performances across the board were fantastic. Like, the, the acting and everything in this episode was great. The dramatic acting in the sequences with Jim Gordon's in a turmoil, and as well as the more sort of comedic acting sequences from the hypnotized Ivy victims. It was brilliant. It was one of those Gotham episodes that was really fast-paced and just full of action and stuff, but there was also, like, a really good focus on character, on the character of Jim Gordon. But as well as that, seeing how other characters deal with the Poison Ivy crisis while Jim Gordon is kind of benched for the episode. It is a really great story this time. And I won't give it away, but like, at least not until we get to the spoiler section, but the ending legitimately hit me right in the feels. I thought that was a wonderful ending. It's that kind of moment. The kind of moment we got in the ending of this episode was exactly what I have been waiting for this entire season. This is what I've wanted to see, is some actual resolution, some actual moving on to something exciting. As well as that, the character development of Barbara in this season, I will really admit, I love what they've done with Barbara Keane this season. I, I was dubious at first because I've never been fully on board with the more gangster, anti-hero sort of Barbara Keane. I've always preferred the more kooky, crazy one from season two. But at the same time, in this season, they've kind of been working towards a redemption with her, and they've developed her in a way that's actually made me care about this character again. She's not just going around in circles 
And yeah, th there are a few things that I do take issue with that I will talk about in the spoiler section. But for now, what I'll say is that was a dang good episode. I really enjoyed it. If you've stopped watching Gotham because you've gotten tired of all the filler lately, do tune back into this one because it is a great episode. And I feel like this one is really integral to the plot going forward. So now we're into spoiler territory, folks. And um, yeah, so let's start off with uh, Poison Ivy's victims. Um, so for starters, uh, she was the one that ordered uh, for Jim Gordon to be shot during his rousing speech at the beginning of the episode. And it was a really cool twist seeing how they sort of revealed that it was Jim Gordon that's been shot. And when it led to this inner conflict with himself where he was sort of put on trial by the people he most cared about, I won't lie, I do feel like we missed a few opportunities with the actual trial itself, being as we only really saw Jim Gordon and Lee Tompkins. However, the wake scene I loved, because we saw all the characters again, we saw Professor Pig, I think we saw Theo Gallivan in there, I'm gonna double check. He, he's in the dark, but I could swear that was Theo Gallivan, and if that was, that's awesome. You know, I, I harp on about this too much, but this would have been the perfect opportunity to show Jerome just one last time. I would have loved that. I mean, maybe he is in there, but I certainly didn't see him. But to see all the characters come back here has made me feel a bit better about their introductions in Year Zero at the start of the season. Because they sort of introduced these characters like they would all go on to do big things. And we haven't seen them since that, and nothing has really been done, and let's face it, we're on crunch time now, folks. Like, we're heading into the end game. we're heading into the finale, we're heading into the final confrontation with Bane. It's not going to be time to show Mr. Freeze, Firefly, and, um, and Scarecrow. But the fact is, we saw them here, and I wasn't expecting to see Professor Pig again, that's for sure. And, um... Yeah, just seeing them at, at his wake and everything is the kind of surrealistic imagery that I really watched Gotham for. I thought that was probably my favourite scene in the episode, bar just a few moments, I guess. Um, as for Poison Ivy's other victims, uh, so she hypnotises Bruce Wayne and she hypnotises Victor Zaz, which is really fun to see. Like, we've never seen Victor Zaz in love, and I've got to say, I think outside of Cameron Monaghan as uh, Jerome or Jeremiah, I do think Victor Zaz is the scene stealer. Like, in every scene he's in, he is fantastic and just commands so much presence. But seeing him all hypnotized and in love with Ivy and everything was actually hilarious. I actually found that really funny. Um, also, when uh, Ivy sends Bruce to go hypnotize Lucius Fox to go and sabotage Gotham, it, it, I think Lucius Fox, uh, his performance here was absolutely brilliant. Like, the comedic timing, the facial acting, and everything was just outstanding. Like, these actors have proven that they can nail comedy elements perfectly. It's, it's fantastic. I've always thought Gotham has done well with the comedy, but this episode really did get a lot of laughs out of me, which was great when juxtaposed with the sheer drama of Jim Gordon's story. And there's a sequence in there where he's getting handed his baby and it drops and he screams, and just Ben McKenzie's acting his heart out in that sequence. It's absolutely incredible incredible. But then come, I'm, I'm gonna get into my sort of negative section now. Um, basically, I feel it's a little strange that Lee Tompkins has kind of been automatically assumed to mother Jim Gordon's child. Um, because they did split, and it has seemed like it was very over, and it seemed like she wasn't in the most sound of mind. She'd gone on to become more of a roguish sort of anti-hero that fell in love with Riddler, and with her and Riddler, like, they, you know, they died stabbing each other in the back at the end of season four, only to be brought back by Hugo Strange, but they died in each other's arms. It was sort of like they were destined for each other's sort of death. So now that she's back and she's completely normal, and they've just swept her entire relationship with Riddler, under the rug, it's it's a little jarring. It had me asking a lot of questions, really. And I think that was my concern with Lee Tompkins coming back in this season, is I felt like a lot of things had been kind of resolved with her, and I felt like they could only really flip-flop on her story over and over again so many times before I'd get kind of tired of it. And that's the thing, is Gotham does have a tendency to flip-flop on character development. I think they're very aware that some ideas work better than others, so they kind of throw them out. Like, as I say, I'm grateful that they got rid of the man-hating angle with Barbara Keane at the end of Season 4. They've just swept that under the rug. Which brings me over to Barbara Keane. So she has a really good character dynamic with Penguin in this episode, of all people. And I have to admit, I love those two together. Like, they, they have a great back and forth between each other, and they kind of bring out the best and worst in each other in a really fun way. Like... I enjoyed their character dynamic, but I also enjoyed that we've seen Barbara Keane really 
rediscovering her humanity and like we saw there was a scene where she was in her bar and she poisoned the folks and everything that she kind of puts on the sort of gangster stuff but deep down inside she's still a decent person i thought this was a great story for barbara and i feel like the fact that they're bringing her through to a redemption is a really good thing actually because i'd really lost interest in her character by the end of season three so the fact that they've been able to rekindle that interest with this season so far is actually really good. That's an outstanding thing I can safely say about it. Now then, as for that ending, this is one of a very, very select few moments in Gotham. In fact, I think it might be even be the only moment in Gotham where things end on an unmitigatedly happy note. I mean, at least for the heroes anyway. Um, it, it's, not, it's not good for Barbara Keane or anything, but... We have a month's time jump, and we see the wedding of Jim Gordon and Lee Tompkins, and it's a really magical sequence. Like, it's inside the GCPD, we see um, Harvey Bullock is officiating the wedding, it's a really honest wedding and stuff. It's one of those moments that really hit me in the feels. I loved this scene, this was absolutely wonderful, and I feel like this is kind of what I've been wanting to see all this time is I kind of feel more comfortable now knowing that Jim Gordon's character has had a really good resolution. I feel like these characters have been brought as far as they can go in their current age groups. As far as the long story of Gotham goes, Jim Gordon's pretty much got his happy ending and now it's on to just the final epic battle for us to really round this off and take it home. I think we're actually on to a good ending after all that. <laughs> One thing I think I've neglected to mention was um Selena Kyle and Bruce Wayne's relationship in this episode gets developed really well in how we see Selena deal with Bruce being under Poison Ivy's spell and uh, we see a more sensitive side to Selena and it's nice because we get a little date scene between the two as well at the start it's sort of like a, a no man's land date it's, it's just a really nice thing to see that people are still living their lives in spite of all this this is kind of what I wanted to see I don't know what other people think I'm not sure why people call this filler because a lot happens in this episode we seem to show that Bruce Wayne and Selina Kyle are capable of solving a situation without Jim Gordon. The best is brought out in everyone. We get some proper Batman villain stuff with Poison Ivy taking over with Victor Zaz. Jim Gordon finally realizes that Gotham is better off with him in it. And as well as that, he gets a happy ending in marrying Lee Tompkins. This one episode, in a very natural way, advanced things to where they need to be for the next stage, for wrapping it all up now. And so I feel like maybe in three episodes time we can do this. Maybe they can bring it home in a really wonderful way. I really hope so. I really want this for Gotham. No one wants Gotham to end well like I do, or more than I do, I guess I should say. This show is precious to me, really. And this episode was fantastic. So yeah, I can't wait for what's coming next. I think we're moving on to the war with Bane. That will probably be a two-parter. And then it's on to the finale where they take it home. I can't wait. Did you enjoy this video? What did you think of this episode? Comment below and let's discuss. And as always, if you are new here, do remember to subscribe. If not, but... Wait, no, hang on. No, if you are new here <laughs> and you like what you see, do not forget to click subscribe. And otherwise, if you're already subscribed, I am glad to see you here again. Good. Okay, got it. All right. Thank you. Catch you next time. Sorry about that.